Hello everyone and welcome to Tuesday morning. It's Stephen Whiteside here from theuptrend.com. In the pre-market this morning, things are fairly quiet. Stock index futures and commodities are basically flat at the moment. We do have PPI numbers coming out at 8.30 this morning. That could certainly change the tone of the market. Now there is lots of action going on in the pre-market on Tuesday morning. BlackBerry uh, trading in New York is up over 26%. Tilray uh, trading in New York is up over 15%. Both of these stocks are currently on buy signals in Toronto. Uh, SunPower, I know several of our members are following SunPower. It's up 14% in the pre-market. Uh, we've got Home Depot out with earnings. It's uh, trading higher this morning, up another $6, currently on a buy signal. Now the VIX moved up yesterday to the lower channel line. A close above 1449 would give us a buy signal on Tuesday. We saw a lot of bearish reversal signals in Monday's trading action. Uh, looking at the Dow Diamonds, it did not close below the previous day's low. So that's the first thing I would look for. It's one thing to thrust higher and pull back. It's another thing to close below the previous day's low. Uh, so while we hit a new high yesterday, we did see a pullback uh, for the Dow Diamonds. We saw a uh, basically unchanged for the SPY, the Spider ETF. Uh, inside day for the NASDAQ 100. Inside day for the Russell 2000. Uh, we saw the small cap ETF make a new high before pulling back. So two bearish reversal days in a row. Again, we did not close below the previous day's low. Inside day for micro cap stocks. Looking at the Canadian market, the iShares for the TSX 60 just pulled back 10 cents yesterday. Cameco was the big loser on the TSX 60, uh, back on a sell signal as of uh, last night's close. Uh, we had a reversal for Nutrien, and uh, we've got restaurant brands on its uh, second day of a sell signal, so no change there. Now looking at the Venture Exchange, we're up at what seem to be new highs here, uh, but it's kind of deceiving. When we go back to a weekly chart of the Venture Exchange, you can see we're still uh, trading under the flypaper channel and looking to see if we can break out. If we could break out above the weekly flypaper channel, that could also give us a monthly buy signal, and that's something we haven't had for a couple of years now. Let's uh, move on and take a look at the most actively traded stocks from Monday's trading action. And uh, this is a little deja vu -y. Uh, we've got AMC at the top of the most active list yesterday, and it was up over 78%. And of course, everybody's calling that a short squeeze, and uh, there's no other explanation for it. There's no takeover offer, and uh, there's certainly no major change in the movie theater business. So we're up over 78%. We continue to move higher this morning. Now, we actually ended Friday on a sell signal. We closed at 291. You come in on uh, Monday morning and you see that we're going to open up at 352. There's no reason for you to take that sell signal. And of course, uh, it continued to move higher throughout the day. It's actually up another 93% in the pre market this morning, trading up over $10 right now. So we went from $291 to over $10 in just two days. That is definitely a short squeeze. Now, I talk about shorting all the time, but I've got some rules. Uh, I don't want to ever be involved in a short squeeze. I want to short stocks that I want to own. So uh, big cap stocks that I follow on a regular basis that I want to continue to own. Those are the stocks I, I short. I don't short them because I don't like them. I don't short them because I think Apple or Visa or Goldman Sachs are going to go out of business. I short them because they go up and they go down. And so when they're going down, why not make five, ten, twenty dollars while they're going down? And then I've got that money allocated uh, to uh, buying them again. Uh, so, you know, I'm not, uh, t if I want to follow Apple, if I want to follow Tesla, it doesn't matter. Uh, but I've got that money set aside. So when we get a new buy signal, I'm going to close the remainder of my short position if I haven't already taken money off the table. And then I'm going to go long the stock. I want to short stocks off the top of the panic zones when most people are still bullish on the stock, even though it's starting to move in the other direction. I want to short a stock when a right side sell signal has been generated. That is a buy signal for a short position. I never short a stock because I, I think it's going to go down or I don't like the stock or, you know, I wish the stock ill will. I just do it because it's part of the, the cycles of the market. Stocks go up, stocks go down. I just want to make money when they're going down. I don't think they're going to zero. That's not the type of situation I'm going to get myself into. Remember, gains are limited when you're shorting a stock. When a stock is at $2.91, it can only go down $2.91. On the upside, 
losses are unlimited as you can see uh, two a stock that traded at 291 on Friday is now trading over ten dollars it can go to 20 it can go to 30 it can go to 40 who knows how much these guys are going to squeeze the stock higher but losses are definitely unlimited so I want to short stocks that I don't think are going to get taken over. You know, I don't think Apple or Visa, or Goldman Sachs, I don't think any of those stocks that I follow closely are going to get takeover offers anytime soon. So, uh, you know, those are the stocks I want to short. I don't want to short penny stocks. I don't want to short stocks that could be uh, get a takeover offer or new management that could shoot the stock higher tomorrow. That's not the type of shorting I'm getting involved in. And I'm certainly not going to be shorting AMC. Uh, if I was going to short it, off the top of the panic zones, early warning signal went off. The chart started to turn red. We got a, a right side sell signal. That's the time and place I want to get out. Uh, when it's oversold, when you've got an elongated pressure zone here telling you that it's broken. Uh, these are the stocks that get set up for short squeezes. And here we had another pressure zone. Uh, the chart started to turn blue. That's the time and place where you don't want to be in a, involved in a short position. That's also true for GameStop. GameStop's been on a buy signal for a couple of weeks now. It was up to 74%. It's continuing to move higher on Tuesday morning. Novavax was also up yesterday, up another uh, 47, 48% on the day. Uh, so that one's continuing to move higher in the pre-market this morning. Now, NEO is still on a buy signal. No change there. No change for Apple. Trying to hit uh, 187.50. If we can clear that, then 193.75 comes into play. No joy for Tesla. Still looking for a close above $179.04 on Tuesday. Uh, we still have Rivian on a buy signal. No change there. Ford still on a sell signal. Trading in the channel once again. A close above $12.48 would give us a new buy signal. Now we talked about Ford recently. The fact that we are projecting lower prices here. But you've got to take into account any uh, previous areas of support. And uh, we're certainly looking at that at the moment. Still holding $12. Uh, some people are looking at a possible head and shoulders here. Uh, that would certainly come into play if we broke the $12 level and started moving lower. Of course, before we get down to this projection down here, there's also another level of support just below $11. So that hasn't come into play yet. Neither has our projection. We're still holding $12. Now, SoFi traded up through the upper channel line. A close above 721 would give us a buy signal. Would I take that? No, absolutely not. SoFi is still a very weak looking stock. We made a high here, a lower high, a lower low, lower low, lower high, lower high, lower low. And the last two buy signals failed very quickly. So not a stock I'm interested. Compare that recent pullback in SoFi to this one, SoundHound. I had a nice uh, down move for a month or so and then started to move back up. So when you get down here, you got to figure most of the people that hate the stock have had the opportunity to sell. And now you're looking to see if uh, the fans can come back. And so far, that looks like it's the case. We had an inside day yesterday. We had lots of inside days on Monday. Uh, those are days of indecision. Traders probably waiting to see how the PPI numbers look this morning. Then Intel. Intel might actually walk itself into a buy signal. Channel is continuing to move lower. Intel is continuing to move sideways. So we may see a buy signal signal here. Would I take it? Nope. I'd rather follow the uh, winners and uh, buy them on a pullback than uh, chasing something like Intel, the, a stock that nobody wants at the present time. Then moving on to the Canadian market, uh, there we've got Enbridge, an inside day on Monday, so no change in trend there. A little reversal for Manulife. Manulife, we were looking for a move up to 34.38 and then uh, 35.94 last week, and uh, we've almost got to 35.94, so uh, we're trying to, obviously that is a level of resistance, and we've got sellers coming in just below that. And uh, the high yesterday was actually 35.72. So uh, hoping if we can uh, tag that on uh, Tuesday, that would be great. But otherwise, uh, it's uh, certainly had a nice run over the past couple of weeks. Looking at Synovus, treading water up here, no change in trend. Uh, we've got a new high for the Royal Bank heading towards the top of our projected trading range on the daily charts of 143.75. If we take that out, then 150 would certainly come into play. Uh, no joy for ARC, still treading water up here. Again, I'm not really interested in chasing a lot of these resource stocks that are already up at the top of the panic zones. That includes Suncor on a buy signal right now, no change in trend. No change in trend for Baytech, making a new low for this move on Monday, and a new low for Shopify, unfortunately. 
We also saw a new low for Bit Farms yesterday, and we've got uh, Kinross uh, up there at the 1050 level, trying to break out through it. Look at the big updates we had on uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Friday, very quiet day. Monday, very quiet day. So looking to see if we can punch out above 1050 for Kinross. Okay, folks, that is all for this morning's presentation. Still quiet out there in the pre-market this morning, waiting for those PPI numbers to come out and tell us which way the market is going to go next. Enjoy the rest of your day. Next time you'll hear my voice is on Wednesday morning. Thank you for watching today's presentation. If you found this video useful, please consider hitting the like button, sharing it, and subscribing to our channel to ensure you never miss a video. We look forward to having you join us for our next daily market update.